Hi everyone, welcome to LCBO's Fall for Whiskey Cocktails live stream, a part of LCBO's Together for Ontario campaign. My name is Evelyn Chick and I'm the Regional Beverage Director for the Donnelly Group and founder of EvelynChickProject.com. So that's a creative hub filled with bespoke recipes, a virtual cocktail experience for drink enthusiasts just like yourself. And I'm really excited to bring you this live stream class right from my own home to show you how easy it is to just mix with things that you can grab from your local LCBO, maybe some local ingredients to highlight these beautiful whiskeys. So today we'll be making four cocktails that are fall inspired recipes. Not only do these fall cocktails highlight some of the fantastic Canadian whiskeys that we picked just for this today, but also showcases how they mix with local ingredients that are super easy to find. So before I continue, I want to introduce you to my very talented, super awesome, and color-coordinated co-host, Alex Pierce. Hi, Alex. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. As Evelyn said, my name is Alex Pierce, the owner and operator of Superfly. Superfly is a funky, small cocktail bar downtown Toronto in Parkdale. Uh, we got a covered and heated patio for these really unsure, chilly times. Um, and me and Evelyn are here today to walk you through some fall inspired whiskey cocktails. I'm a huge fan of fall cocktails just because the produce we get here in Ontario at the moment is incredible. We get a lot of fruit, a lot of herbs, just fresh from Ontario at this time. And working with Canadian whiskey with these, with this sort of produce just pairs perfectly. It also just gets you in the mood for to be cozy, to be warm, gets you in a bit of a holiday spirit. So Evelyn, you, you want to kick us off with our first cocktail? Yeah, I totally agree with you. This is complete sweater weather right now. And I believe that every good drink really starts with good ingredients. Obviously, you want to pick your beautiful whiskey. And I like working with Canadian whiskey because it's got a really nice, like diverse range in terms of flavor profiles. So I find it really interesting that we actually pick four shaken drinks to show you today. Um, <laughs> ranging from using Crown Royal to Canadian Club to Lot 40, 100% uh, rye to Alberta Premium Rye. Whereas normally when you look at whiskey or when you pick a whiskey cocktail, it's associated with something a little bit more warm, like an Old Fashioned or a Manhattan. But today we're going to show you that it's actually really easy to kind of think outside the box a little bit and do something fresh, but still preserve those beautiful fall, fall flavors. So the first drink I'm going to make, uh, I developed, uh, especially for Crown Royal, it's called My November. So we've obviously had like a pretty tough year, but hopefully in November, things start looking up and our cases start going down. So this is actually like a really kind of refreshing drink with beautiful floral notes. So we're going to start off with um, our base spirits, uh, Crown Royal whiskey, age in a variety of casks. And a lot of people pick Crown Royal because it's nice and smooth. And I think the smoothness sort of come from uh, the fact that it's a blended whiskey uh, with a couple of different finishes. So to highlight the sort of kind of orange peel and vanilla notes of Crown Royal, I'm going to add half an ounce of the beautiful local vermouth uh, from Dylan's Distillery. So it'll add a touch of like herbaceousness on this um, kind of sour take on a cocktail. Uh, when you think about whiskey sours, you think like egg white, frothy, uh, a little bit more textured, but this actually provides like a really, really great uh, backbone to this fresh, like citrusy, orangey, herbal cocktail. So we're going to sweeten it with a little bit of local Canadian honey, just half an ounce of that. And if you're making this cocktail at home and you don't have one of these measuring jiggers, which is kind of like our bartender's measuring cup, you can definitely use a tablespoon. So a tablespoon is half an ounce. So what I just added in is half an ounce, uh, which is one tablespoon of a local wildflower honey. Uh, then we're going to add three quarter ounces of lemon juice to bring out those beautiful citrus notes in the whiskey. And uh, when you are out there picking citrus to juice for your cocktails, pick one of the ones that are like kind of ugly. You normally won't pick for display. If it's squishy and ripe, you know that's going to give you a really good amount of juice. So the next thing you're going to do is add ice. And I'm going to grab it from my freezer because I didn't want it to melt. Um, having good ice is also really kind of important. You want to make sure to fill your shaker tin or if you're uh, working from home, um, you can also do a gin bottle or whatnot. So you want to fill your shaker tin three quarters full of ice and give it a nice vigorous 10 to 15 second shake. 
This is going to be a little bit loud, but bear with me. It's going to be short. Well, that was a fail. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you get your 10 to 15 second shake, and after you do that, you want to strain into a rock glass. Kind of like an old-fashioned glass that you would use. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more ice. Luckily, I have lots around. Perfect. There's always a little bit of something that happens with these online classes, right, Alex? That's right. You're doing a killer job so far. That looks delicious. I'm excited to have one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> so... Yeah, after even being in the industry for 13 years, there's always just something that happens. So you want to fill your rock glass with ice, and then afterwards, we're going to garnish it with a really long twist of orange. So this is actually the same garnish that you would use for an old-fashioned, and the reason why we picked this garnish is because it highlights those sort of really beautiful all-spice elements of the drink, and you want to just use a potato peeler to peel your orange peel like this, and you want to just zest it over your cocktail. So this kind of brings out the really sort of sweet oils from the orange peel, and you just want to stick it in, give it a nice twirl, and you always sort of drink with your nose as well. So this kind of transcends a little bit of those beautiful kind of allspice, woodsy flavors of Crown Royal and the vermouth, and uh, this cocktail is going to be awesome. It's called My November. Alex, I'm going to go right to you. Yeah. Amazing. Evelyn, like I said, that looks incredible. Would you say that's like a bit of a take really on just a shaken old fashioned, like a, uh, a fresh citrusy, sorry, Manhattan? Because it does have the whiskey, it does have the vermouth. So for an introductory cocktail person who only would know something like a Manhattan, they could definitely go to that, right? Yeah. So if you're thinking like, okay, a Manhattan is full of you know, a 40% spirit and something that's a little bit lo low AB, like 14 to 16% of the vermouth, this is quite like, a, I would say like a boozy or a high ABV drink. So if you're liking something like a Manhattan, you want to get something that's a little bit more refreshing and a little bit more um, sort of palate friendly, this is a fantastic cocktail that will mimic those flavors. So it's got like the rootiness of the vermouth and it's got like that vanilla kind of orangey allspice uh, from what you would get from a Canadian whiskey. Amazing. Yeah, it sounds incredible, looks incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, right now I'm going to be making a cocktail that I came up with called the Lost Passport. I'm going to be using Lot 40 Canadian Rye. I chose to use Lot 40 Canadian Rye just because it's a quite spicy rye. And when I say spicy, I don't mean, you know, traditional jalapeno spices, but, you know, uh, baking spices. It's quite peppery with a bit of black pepper, a lot of cardamom in there, has some vanilla and some real woody flavors. So these cocktails, we want to be super accessible, anyone to be able to make them at home. So you don't need a lot of fancy tools to be making these drinks just in your kitchen, in your living room. We're going to start with just any sort of tall glass, and we're going to add an ounce and a half of the Lot 40 Canadian Whiskey. If you don't have any bartender tools, that's okay. Grab something like shot glass, just any sort of standard shot glass, fill it up to the brim, and that's one ounce. You're going to do the same size shot glass and fill it up halfway. There you go. That's an ounce and a half. Again, we want to make this super accessible. Anyone can make these at home. So you got the ounce and a half of your Lot 40 whiskey, and we're just going to add some fresh sage. Now, this sage is going to bring a real nice herbaceous note to this cocktail. Uh, it's going to play up the green cardamom in the Lot 40. Just add a real fresh element to it. And once you got that sage in there, you just want to muddle these ingredients a bit. Now, when you're muddling at home, use the back of a spoon. If you got a muddler, go for it. Use a pan handle, whatever you'd like to just get these flavors in. And we're not trying to mash the sage in there. We're not trying to destroy the herbs. We're just pressing on the sage and that whiskey for a bit, trying to release those really nice sage oils. As you do that, you really should be smelling that sage coming and wafting out of that glass. So then we're just going to add a bit of a squeeze of fresh lemon juice. Uh, about a teaspoon amount would be the, your go-to. So just some fresh lemon. And a real nice element to this drink is a fresh homemade sumac syrup. Now, sumac's a berry. 
uh, harvested in Ontario this time of year. It's picked, it's ground, and turned into a spice. Sumac has a lot of really like lemony, tangy, tangy, um, sour flavors. And I make the sumac syrup at home. You can too. You can find sumac spice in any international market. A lot of grocery stores have sumac. Uh, if you can't find sumac, go with something like a tamarind paste. And if not, really, we're just trying to add a little bit of sugar to this cocktail. So a teaspoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of white sugar in here, it'll be perfect. Um, if you want to do get fancy with it and make sort of a sumac simple syrup or a flavored simple, simple syrup, grab a little bit of that ingredient, equal parts sugar and water, throw it in a pot, put it on a burner, bring that to a boil, and that's your fancy simple syrup. What Evelyn and I, and I do is real easy. We're not trying to make this complicated for you. So once your syrup, lemon, herbs, and whiskey are in the glass, we're just going to add a bunch of ice. We're going to give it a little stir just to make sure those ingredients are all incorporated. Now, the reason I developed this cocktail was because I'm a big beer drinker. We're obviously focusing on Canadian whiskeys here. So I made a cocktail that's a take on a shandy, you know, a beer and some sort of lengthener, a ginger ale, something spicy. I really thought that Lot 40, the spice and the cardamom in that Lot 40 would mimic a spicy lengthener and would go perfect with the beer that we're going to use. I chose a local Ontario IPA. Grab your favorite beer from the LCBO and just pour that all into the cup. I chose an IPA just because IPAs are hoppy, they're bitter, they're quite dry. That bitterness and that hop profile really plays off the breadiness of that rye. Give it another quick stir, make sure all those flavors are incorporated. And we're going to garnish with some fresh sage, just to give that aroma of the sage that's been in there before. So cheers. That's my November. Hmm. Alex, that sounds amazing. I can't wait. Hey. So I love that you like created a cocktail that is a Collins style drink. Collins style just means like it's a little bit taller. So as I was mentioning before, sometimes when we pick whiskeys, we always gravitate towards something that's like short and boozy and you know high abv whereas like it may not be super crazy approachable so if you're just starting to drink whiskey these recipes that you can find on lcbo.com is actually extremely approachable like alex mentioned and it's also very refreshing and it kind of brings out different flavors that something like a stirred cocktail like an old-fashioned or in manhattan that we mentioned earlier would bring out so i'm really excited to show you another cocktail that Meg and Chris from Thunder Bay, Ontario had created uh, for a Canadian Club 12 year. And I think the range of sort of Canadian whiskeys that we're using today really showcases the different um, sort of uh, notes that you can draw from it. And I like an aged whiskey like that because it kind of gives it another depth of flavor and a little bit more texture. So this cocktail is going to be shaken in uh, something that is called a coupe. So it's a short, like very like intensely flavored drink. Um, drink responsibly and sip and savor this because those flavors really kind of will develop as your drink goes. So I was mentioning Canadian Club 12 year old. Um, it's an aged whiskey. It's got a little bit more uh, wood influence to it. So the kind of flavors that are overriding in all the Canadian whiskey, baking spices, some citrus notes, some floral notes. Um, this whiskey kind of has this like, a little bit of chicory even, a little bit more kind of like woodsy, earthy flavors in the back end just because it's a, it's an aged whiskey. So it'll work beautifully with all the different flavors we're gonna put in this. So we're gonna start with the star of the show, which is a Canadian Club 12 year old. And we're gonna do an ounce and a half of that. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're using a tablespoon, which is half an ounce, this will be three tablespoons of Canadian Club uh, 12 year. And then to highlight these sort of beautiful, um, like burnt orange, a um, little bit more breadsy notes, we're gonna do half an ounce of an orange liqueur, and I've picked Grand Marnier for this. Uh, there's a little bit of cognac in Grand Marnier, so it kind of gives it that like roundness that this cocktail needs. And uh, a little bit of liqueur 43, just to highlight those vanilla notes. Just a quarter ounce, so if you're using a tablespoon, it's half a tablespoon, so that's pretty easy to remember. 
And now the next ingredient is pretty easy to find. It's pear juice. So with, you know, bringing up these beautiful fall flavors that are in the whiskey, I think pear juice is a fantastic choice. Thank you, Megan, for this. Um, this is just Barlet pear juice uh, from my corner, um, actually Italian grocer. So we're trying to support local businesses and we'll kind of tell you a little bit later as to how you can support more local businesses through the LCBO. Uh, we're going to do three quarter ounces of Barlet pear juice. And I think that adds like a really nice warming feeling and it highlights the sort of vanilla and allspice flavors in the whiskey. If you ever sort of like poached a pear and you're ready to make some pear pie or something like that, maybe go with vanilla ice cream. Think about it when you're creating or when you're mixing this drink, like how you would if you were to work with baking spices. I think that goes really well together. Um, and then we're gonna do a bar spoon, which is sort of like the bartender's like whisper of salt spoon. Um, in this cocktail. So a bar spoon is just uh, about seven mil, um, five to seven mil, which will be just under half a tablespoon or just under a quarter tablespoon um, of honey. And then we're going to do three quarter ounces of lemon. So put it all in that shaker tin and then we're going to try not to bring uh, the ice everywhere on the floor. This time I'm going to put it actually in the tin which would be a better choice. So we're gonna fill this tin up, or again, like if you have a gym bottle or whatnot, just put it right into the tin. And again, give it a good 10 to 15 shake in, uh, 10 to 15 second hard shake. Yeah. <laughs> so the purpose of shaking a cocktail versus stirring a cocktail is that Anything with citrus with a little bit more texture needs some aeration. So when you drink like, you know, a daiquiri or a gimlet or some uh, cocktail that's served in a coupe, uh, like a glass like this or served up, that little sort of air bubbles that you put in the cocktail actually allows for a more frothy texture to come out and it actually enhances the flavors and it uh, kind of softens the citrus a little bit, brings out the other flavors. So this would be a perfect little short but amazingly flavorful cocktail that you can make at home. So just strain it into your favorite cocktail coupe and I'm going to garnish it with just a little slice of scarlet pear um, and you know you drink with your eyes, you drink with your nose, you want to make sure that all those beautiful flavors you preserve in the cocktail is um, translated all the way throughout. So I'm just going to lay this scarlet pear on top. It smells Smells like fall. It's absolutely delicious. And I can attest to that. So it's like, you know, it's like really sort of beautiful, um, earthy. It's got this like vanilla sort of orange note to it. And the pear just rounds it out perfectly. So Alex, I wish you can try this right now, but you're all the way over there. So I'm going to see what <laughs> you're making. That's okay. I guarantee I'll be making all of these drinks at the end of the session. Uh, we'll get to try everything. I love that, that you say, you know, it smells like fall. All these cocktails that we're creating right now, they're reminiscent of the holidays. The time, it's getting a little bit colder. The goal with all these is just for you to be cozy and warm at home and get into the holiday spirit. Uh, so what I'm gonna be making for you right now is the 20 Mile Mule by a bartender named Christina Vieira, uh, local Toronto bartender. She's incredible, local hero. We're gonna be using Alberta Premium Whiskey. Um, so Alberta Premium is a Canadian rye that's a bit on the sweeter side. With the Alberta Premium, there's a lot of warm spice and baking notes. So some cinnamon, clove, uh, there's a lot of caramel and vanilla to this rye, and there's a lot of allspice. So the cocktail that, created, that uh, Christina created for this is incorporating and really bumping up that allspice. So, we're just gonna take two of those shot glasses, any shot glasses at home, fill them up to the top, and we're adding two ounces of the whiskey here. Again, we're trying to make these super approachable, super easy for you to make at home. You don't need fancy tools for this, and especially for this cocktail. This cocktail is so versatile because you can incorporate uh, you know, a whiskey, a Canadian rye, plus any sort of herbs and fruit that you'd like to put in this. Christina has chosen some fresh Ontario plums. So about a 
quarter of a cup of fresh Ontario plums that are diced. And these plums are really going to play up like the vanilla, the caramel notes in this whiskey. And, you know, just like baking, we have our base, the whiskey, we have something sweet, the plum. We just need something, another layer of flavor to bump this cocktail up a bit. So we're going to add a fresh herb. And tonight we're going to be using some fresh thyme. So a few sprigs of thyme. Anyone who bakes out there, anyone who cooks regularly, you know, stone fruit and thyme, stone fruit and sage, they go insanely well together. So we're using any sort of container for this cocktail that is that can be sealed. So use a mason jar, use a liter container, use a Tupperware container, anything that can be sealed. And we're going to give it just a little gentle shake just to try and incorporate all those flavors into the rye. Now, Christina recommends throwing this vessel into a fridge, letting it sit for about two or four hours, just to let those flavors soak into the whiskey and infuse a little bit. Uh, and so this cocktail is perfect for if you're planning for a week ahead, you're busy all week and you're planning to have a drink on the weekend, make these with your meal prep on Monday, they'll be ready to go by the weekend. So take them out of your fridge, take the cap off, and we're just gonna add a bit of fresh lemon juice, half an ounce. So like Evelyn explained, half an ounce, if you don't have the tools, a tablespoon of just a normal spoon of lemon juice there. Then we're also gonna add a little bit of bitters. Now bitters are like the bartender's spice rack, essentially. Bitters allow us to add flavor to a cocktail, allow flavor, to add flavor to a drink without adding much volume, and just really, it's concentrated flavors. So right now we're using a crab apple bitter to really bump up the flavors of that, of that plum and that thyme in there. The reason this cocktail is so great, so versatile, you don't have to use plums, you can use whatever fruit you'd like, you don't have to use thyme, you can use whatever herbs you'd like, and really whatever bitters you'd like to put in there, just as an extra flavoring agent. So those are all in your mason jar, all in your sealable container. Just grab some ice, fill to the top, and we're going to lengthen this a little bit. So it's a really light, refreshing drink. We're going to do about an ounce of soda water, just a splash of soda, and then some ginger beer. And this ginger beer is really going to work nicely with that thyme. The ginger beer really works with this Alberta Premium Whiskey because of all of the warm baking notes. You know, that cinnamon, that clove. Give it just a little bit of a stir to incorporate all those flavors. And just so it looks pretty, if you're taking pics of this, if you want to impress someone, add a couple slices of the fresh fruit that you incorporated into your cocktail and a sprig of that fresh herb too. You know, these are great for pictures, they look incredible, but also when you go to take a sip of a cocktail, the first thing you're gonna get is that nose, you're gonna get a hit of that thyme, you're gonna smell the fresh plums, you're gonna smell that ginger beer. And really that all just works wonderfully together. Cheers. Cheers, it honestly looks amazing. And yeah, when I was mentioning earlier of how you drink with your eyes and you drink with your nose, a lot of people sort of kind of like ignore the garnish a little bit. Some cocktails you don't really need it, but I think for whiskeys, because it's so versatile, because you can pull out so many beautiful fall flavors, depending on the whiskey you pick, the garnish is actually almost like a really integral part of the drink. So. I would say, you know, the next time I walk into an LCBO, Alex, what do you think or why do you think we should maybe pick some Canadian rye? You know, I think Canadian rye has been slept on a little bit. I think a lot of people gravitate towards American whiskeys like bourbon, but Canadian ryes are really, really versatile. So if you're a cocktail drinker that loves a stirred boozy cocktail and you'd like an old fashioned or a Manhattan, or something like that that re really allows you to taste that whiskey. You know, a Canadian rye can work wonderfully with that, as well as with lengtheners like ginger beer, ginger ale, soda water, fresh juices. Even when you do 
add a lot of complexity to a cocktail. With a Canadian rye, you still taste those warm baking spices. You taste that vanilla. You taste that caramel. You know, the backbone of these Canadian ryes, they really just stand up to whatever you're doing with them, however you're mixing them. So they're really versatile. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's also like the continuity of like the different, you know, flavors that you can pick from each and every different Canadian rye. Um, you know, if you're somebody who likes something that's a little bit lighter and more um, elegant in expression, you like the vanilla flavor, something like Crown Royal would work. If you're someone who likes a little bit more boldness and spice, something like Lot 40 would work. I think, you know, it's a category that we continuously would love to explore. So I think you know, whoever's watching, the next time you go pick up a bottle of whiskey, maybe consider something that's like a beautiful local product versus the usual bourbon. Not to say that don't pick a bourbon because I absolutely love bourbon. I'm such a bourbon gal, but there's so many beautiful local products out there. And, you know, we're in this together for Ontario and we want to support local products. Speaking of supporting local, Alex, obviously, you know, you're an owner operator of a bar. There's a, a little bit you know, of sadness because so many of the bars are closed. So what do you think people can do to help out the industry at the moment? You know, as Evelyn said, as much as you can during these times, shop local. And when you hit the LCBO, you grab a Canadian whiskey. That's you helping to do your part by shopping local. Uh, also, there is something called the Bartender's Benevolent Fund that we'd like to shine light on. It is a non-for-profit organization by hospitality workers for hospitality workers. The goal is to acquire funding for people who have been extremely uh, hurt financially by hardships during these times. So as you see on the screen here, bartendersbenevolentfund.ca, log on, donate, every little bit helps. Thanks for your time. Yeah, well, thank you for highlighting the Bartender Benevolence Fund. I'm going to go back and like look at our cocktails. Um, I know that I had a question earlier that I forgot to ask. So when yeah, we were yeah. making the 20 mile, mile mule, uh, you used a crab apple bitter, which is amazing and highlighting the different savory notes of the drink. Is there a substitute for that? Could, do you think people can bring in something that is um, easily accessible in a grocery store or something? Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, the beauty about that 20 mile mule is really make it your own. You know, swap out the fruit, swap out the herbs, swap out the bitters. Probably the most accessible bitter that you, everyone has access to is Angostura. So, you know, you'll see it. It's a small black bottle, bright yellow cap, big label. Angostura bitters and whiskey just go hand in hand. You can find them in almost every grocery store. Evelyn's got a bottle right there. It's super easy to find. Um, so in grocery stores, in every, almost every LCBO, they're right there at the front as you're cashing out. And Angostura bitters are made with, you know, all the notes that we've been talking about from the whiskey. The warm bacon spices, cinnamon, cloves, a lot of allspice. So a couple dashes of Angostura to any whiskey cocktail you're making really bumps it up, really accentuates those flavors. So yeah, thanks for that, Evelyn. Of course, and I like that you highlighted that bitters to us or bitters to bartenders are kind of like a spice rack for chefs. Whenever we create these cocktails or, you know, we're kind of asked to create cocktails, we always think about what can complement the base spirit, sort of like how chefs would look at something that they can find locally and create a dish from that local product. So I think it's really, really cool to think about it that way and highlight these beautiful spirits and beautiful local products with things that can complement them. So Alex, I'm going to raise a glass and cheers you um, for cheers to you, for, Evelyn. you know, joining me. Yeah. So good to see you. Cheers. Oh, great and to see I want to thank everyone um, that joined us in this YouTube live stream. Thank you LCDO uh, for having us. Just remember to enjoy responsibly sip and savor because these are beautiful drinks. You don't want to, you know, go and like drink it all and now you have none left. So sip and savor. <laughs> Cheers and uh, be safe, everybody. Cheers. Have a great night, everyone. This was a pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.